Well, California's first open lesbian, actually the West Coast's first open lesbian, has a connection to San Francisco and the great 1906 earthquake. We're going to learn all about Maria Quay from author Michael Hallquist, author of the book, Radical Politics and Outlaw Passions. Michael, welcome. Thank you, David, very much. Now, you and Marie Equay, am I pronouncing it correct? Equi. Equi. We're both from Portland, Oregon. Well, I mean, she originally from Massachusetts, but her main part of her life was in Portland, Oregon, correct? She moved to Oregon uh, in 1900 and lived the rest of her adult life there. And I'm a native Portlander. Right. I dare say that a lot of people have never heard of her. Just start from the beginning. Who was she? Where was she from? And why should we be reading your book? Sure. Um, Marie Equi. Well, first, she was one of the, the most prominent women activists on the West Coast in the early 20th century. And she came from New Bedford, Massachusetts, a uh, working class immigrant family, father Italian, mother Irish. And she ended up having to drop out of high school to work in the textile mills. So it wasn't a, as a young girl, but it was still childhood labor. She was in the textile mills. She was miserable. She also knew that she was attracted to women. She was not going to marry a man. She was trapped. There was nothing for her in New Bedford. Fortunately, an older classmate who was a woman, who was a, class, um, a friend of hers, invited her to come out to a homestead in Oregon in 1892. Which couldn't have been the most plush of no. <laughs> places. No. It was on the, along the Columbia River, um, outside the Dalles, Oregon. And so Marie jumped at the chance. It was, it was her exit. And it's almost ever since she arrived in Oregon, she started making headlines. Uh, one of them in the Dalles was her girlfriend, who was a school teacher, at some point was not getting paid her full salary by the school superintendent. And Marie finally just got tired of asking and being the polite young woman. She was 21 at the time, she I understand. Was, she was 21, so she told her friend Bessie, she said, I'm getting a horse whip. And she did, and she stalked out in front of his, the school superintendent's office, back and forth, daring him to come out. He finally did, and basically she assaulted him with the horse whip. And the interesting thing is, not only was he a Baptist minister also, but the interesting thing is that the townspeople ended up supporting her because he was more or less a scoundrel. So she got applauded. She was even called queen for a day. Uh, and she was in the headlines. The San Francisco Examiner covered this story. Wow. How does a 21-year-old woman in the late 19th century live as an open lesbian and, frankly, live? I mean. I, I can't imagine that everyone thought she was queen for a day. No, there was, I'm sure there was gossip, of course. There wasn't anything directly in the newspapers about what is it these two women living outside together and they seem so devoted to each other. And it was at a time when there wasn't a word lesbian being right. used. I mean, I mean, that's very much a 20th century construct. Right, so they, people knew there were women of that sort that you wouldn't talk about openly, or they called them spinsters or whatever. Um, but these were two young women. Um, and they just, she, Marie Equi, just decided, this is how I'm going to live, and I'm not going to pretend. They continued living together for another five years, and then they moved to San Francisco, and they lived together here. So I am fascinated by all history, but especially the 1906 earthquake. Uh -huh. It wasn't until this year that I heard the connection between Marie and the 1906 earthquake. I didn't know that there was a lesbian who saved lives after the great quake. Yeah. She was in Portland at that time. She had become a doctor, one of the first 60 doctors, in, women doctors in Oregon. And when the news hit Portland about the earthquake, people were stunned because there were so many ties, like there are today, between Portland and San Francisco, family, mm -hmm. friends, business ties. This, the city came to a standstill, but then quickly thereafter, it was one of the first cities to respond. And like within 18 hours, they had equipped a Southern Pacific train with medical supplies, food, and they had recruited um, doctors and nurses to volunteer. And those doctors, they didn't know what they were getting into. There could be... Uh, right, it wasn't like they could turn on the news and see how bad the damage was. They couldn't get the radio. They couldn't uh, use the uh, telegraph because they were right. flooded uh, with business. So um, Marie Equi was the only woman doctor to volunteer. 
and she, she was on what became known as the Oregon Doctor Train, and they arrived and her contingent, along with the nurses, were placed out at the Presidio in what's now the Thoreau Center. So the building's still yeah, standing. Yeah, right next to the Letterman Arts Center. Right. Yes. So it was the U.S. Army Hospital then. So they were there, and uh, she started getting uh, headlines in San Francisco for her work, partly because it was sort of a novelty, I suppose. Sure. But also, she was just doing amazing work. And she ended up getting praise from the California governor, from the, the mayor of San Francisco, and she was given a medal by the U.S. Army. So this woman, would you know, since the whole concept of being an open lesbian is something within the last 50, 60 years, I would say, probably, as far as talking about it mm -hmm. in, in a way as a political construct, she lived a long life. She lived into the 1950s, correct? Until she was 80 years old. Did she ever actually stand up and say, I'm a lesbian? Was she, like, one of the early people who were there? Like, you know, we talk about Phyllis uh, Martin and, right. and Del Lyon. Um, is she of that school? She's not. That was both before her time. Um, mm -hmm. And I think, I think her approach to it was not only did, wasn't there the language for it, she just lived her life openly. She was a doctor, so she was well known. And she knew that she, people knew that she was living with her lover. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a different woman than who she was on the homestead with. And then there was a scandal in Portland. So this is great. Six weeks after she gets back from the earthquake, she's and like... she's a heroine. She's a heroine. She's like, local girl does really fabulously well. And six weeks later, she ends up in this scandal on the front pages of the Oregonian, the largest newspaper in the state, because her girlfriend uh, ended up being in an inheritance dispute with her mother and with her brother uh, because her mother wasn't giving her money that, that this woman was due. And Marie Equi was cast as this gold digger who had this mysterious influence over this younger <laughs> woman, hypnotic influence. So there they were. I mean, the story was out as much as they were going to right. say it at the time. Did they ever? We've only got a few moments left, but of course we know about the famous story of Oscar Wilde, who was charged and went to prison for being, quote unquote, a sodomite. Mm -hmm. Did anyone ever actually accuse her of being quote unquote sexually deviant in the Oh, definitely. Yeah. She was tried for espionage, for speaking out against World War I. In her trial, the prosecution, the federal attorney, uh, declared that she was a degenerate and an unsexed woman. And J. Edgar Hoover, ironically, uh, closeted, potentially, possibly closeted gay man, was doing his best to keep, to get her in prison and to keep her in San Quentin prison. He thought she would be a bad influence. Not that she was a danger to national security, but just bad for the morale of the American people. So how long did she actually serve in, in she prison? She ended up being there for 10 months. She could have gotten out sooner if Hoover hadn't blocked her uh, getting a pardon or a parole. If you had one thing that you would like people to take away from the extraordinary life that was Marie Equi, what, what would it be? What have you learned from writing this book? I understand you worked on this on and off for 10 years. Right. How did it change you? It made me more committed to not only to social and economic justice, but a passion for it, to expressing the passion and uh, being as engaged as you can with your surroundings. And uh, also what I appreciate about her is she really enjoyed a good time. She wasn't this um, stern ideologue. She had a good time. She, she liked to party. She liked to be out with her friends. But just, you know, don't cross her. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's really a model. And she also balanced being a professional, a doctor, having a political passion, having a relationship, and raising a child. All right. Well, last question, in just about 10 seconds left. As a historian, would you consider to be an open lesbian? Yes, definitely. Thank you for the book. Sure. Thank you for your work. Thanks for watching. This has been David Perry. We'll see you next week on 10%.